Welcome everybody to part 3 of chapter 6, the open economy, and in part 3 we talk about exchange rates. So we define nominal exchange rates, real exchange rates, and we talk about the determinants of real and nominal exchange rates. The nominal exchange rate is the relative price of the currencies of two countries, and we have two ways of quoting an exchange rate. The first way is called the price notation. So from the US perspective, we ask how much is the yen? And the answer will be, for example, 0.01 US dollar, so one US cent for one yen. Then we have quoted the price of one unit of the foreign currency, of course, from an American perspective. The second way to quote an exchange rate is the so-called quantity notation. And there we ask the question, how much foreign currency do I get for one unit of the domestic currency? So for one unit of the domestic currency for one US dollar, I'll get 100 yen. So the quantity notation is the quantity of foreign currency which can be bought by one unit of the domestic currency. Once more, from an American perspective. In this textbook, the quantity notation is used. So this book always is, expresses the exchange rate in units of the foreign currency for one dollar. When the exchange rate change, we talk about an appreciation or depreciation. So in case that the exchange rate increases from 100 yen to 110 yen for one US dollar, we say this is an appreciation of the dollar because one US dollar can buy more yen. In case that the exchange rate decreases from 100 to 90 yen for one US dollar, we call it a depreciation of the dollar. Of course, since an exchange rate is the relative price of two currencies, an appreciation of the dollar also implies that uh, the yen depreciates. So an appreciation of the dollar is also a depreciation of the yen. And a depreciation of the dollar is also an appreciation of the Japanese currency. So when the exchange rate increases, it is an appreciation of the domestic currency and a depreciation of the foreign currency. In case that the exchange rate decreases, it's a depreciation of the domestic currency and an appreciation of the foreign currency. The exchange rate itself can increase or decrease, but the exchange rate does not depreciate or appreciate. It is always a currency which depreciates or appreciates. Always be careful with exchange rates. This exchange rate quotation, which is used in the textbook, goes against the Danish intuition, because Danish students are used to the price notation of foreign currency. So Danish students are used to think about the following way, how much is one euro? What is the price of one euro? And the answer will be 7.44 Danish krona for euro. When this exchange rate increases to eight Danish krona per euro, it's a depreciation of Danish krona. But we have to stick to the textbook. We stick to the textbook and therefore everything is valid what we, what we mentioned on the previous slide. So in case that the exchange rate increases, it's an appreciation of domestic currency. In case that the exchange rate decreases, it is a depreciation of the domestic currency. Please look at these slides. They are very important. So these definitions are very, very important, else everything what follows will be wrong. Right now, we have talked about the so-called nominal exchange rate. What about the real exchange rate? The real exchange rate is the relative price of the goods 
of two countries. So let's assume that the price of an American car is 30 US dollar and the price of a Japanese car is P star equal to 6000 yen. The nominal exchange rate is at 100 yen for US dollar. So the price of the American car measured in yen is equal to the exchange rate E times the domestic uh, price level. So 100 yen for one US dollar times the price of a car in the US, 30 US dollar for American car. So we are able to compute the price of the American car in yen. So it is a case that here the US dollar will cancel out when you multiply through and the price is 3,000 3, yen for the American car. The real exchange rate is the relative price of the goods of two countries. So we have to set E times P in relation to P star. So we get for the real exchange rate epsilon 3,000 yen for one American car divided by 6,000 yen for a Japanese car. It will be the case that we can cancel out here 3,000 and 6,000. So we get 1 over 2 or 0.5. Then the yen will cancel out and we get as a result the real exchange rate is equal to 0 0.5 uh, Japanese cars for one American car. So the real exchange rate is equal to 0 0.5 Japanese cars for one American car. So for one American car, you get 0 0.5 Japanese cars. When the real exchange rate is below one, then Japanese goods are relatively expensive and American cars are cheap. The real exchange rate, or in some textbooks, the reciprocal value of the real exchange rate is sometimes called as terms of trade. If the real exchange rate is high, foreign goods are relatively cheap and domestic goods are relatively expensive. If the real exchange rate is low, then foreign goods are relatively expensive and domestic goods are relatively cheap. When the real exchange rate decreases, domestic goods become cheaper and net exports increase. When the real exchange rate decreases, domestic goods become cheaper, net exports increase. Let's try to come up with a graph which highlights this relationship. So in the following, we would like to work in a diagram where we put like the real exchange rate on the vertical axis. We want to explain the level of the real exchange rate. And uh, we put net exports on the horizontal axis. We said when the real exchange rate decreases, domestic goods become cheaper and net exports increase. Therefore, the net export function is downward sloping. Once more, let's make this clear. When we start at this level here with a certain level of net exports given the real exchange rate, when now the real exchange rate decreases, it's the case that domestic goods become cheaper and net exports increase so that the net export function has a negative slope. This is also mentioned in the textbook, like this graph stems from the textbook. We are working in a diagram where we have the real exchange rate on the vertical axis net exports on the horizontal axis and the net export function is downward sloping. What is to some extent important here is that the origin, like the value of zero, is not here but there. So in case that the real exchange rate takes this value here, then it will be the case that trade is balanced. In case that the real exchange rate is higher, then net exports will be negative. We have a trade balance deficit. And when, we, when the real exchange rate decreases, then the demand for domestic goods increases and 
the economy is running a trade balance surplus. So this zero line to some extent is important in case that you want to judge whether the economy has a, a trade balance surplus or a trade balance deficit. However, this line is missing in the next few graphs. I think it is due to the fact that the textbook only wants to consider whether the trade balance increases or decreases, whether the trade balance improves or deteriorates, and therefore this zero line does not pop up anymore. But I think to some extent it's important in case that we want to find out whether the country is running a trade balance deficit or a trade balance surplus. Let's also have a look at the corresponding net export function. We said when the real exchange rate decreases, then domestic goods become cheaper and net exports increases. So there is like an inverse, like a negative relationship between the development of the real exchange rate and net exports. When the real exchange rate decreases, net exports increase, and also the other way around in case that the real exchange rate increases, then the net exports decrease. On page 167, assignment 2, um, MenQ works with the following linear version of the net exports fun function. Net exports are equal to 1,500, one autonomous component, and then minus 250 times the exchange rate. In case that, for example, the exchange rate takes the value of 1, then it will be the case that net exports are equal to 1,250. In case that the real exchange rate takes a value of 2, then net exports take the value of 1,000. Until now, we were focusing on the net export function. But it's also the case that net exports have to be equal to the difference between national savings and investment. Saving is fixed by the GDP level, the consumption function and fiscal policy like government expenditure and taxes. And investment is determined by the world interest rate. S minus I does not depend on the real exchange rate. This is very important that the right hand side of this equation does not depend on the real exchange rate. So uh, when it comes to this kind of graph, it is the case that a function which represents the right hand side of this equation, like nx is equal to S minus I. The nx function is already here. It is this downward sloping curve. And the s minus i function is a vertical line because it does not depend on the real exchange rate. When it comes to the intersection of the saving minus investment curve and the net export curve, we can find here the equilibrium level of the real exchange rate E1, and on the uh, horizontal axis, we find S minus I, as well as the net exports in the initial situation. So we are trying to plot the left hand side and the right hand side of this equation. The left hand side is given by this net export function, and the right hand side by the difference between saving and investment due to the fact that the right hand side does not depend on the real exchange rate it is a vertical line so this is the corresponding graph of the textbook net export function downward sloping s minus i a vertical line and we can determine here the real exchange rate in equilibrium we have two equations nx is equal to uh, the net export function, which depends on the real exchange rate, and then our, our accounting identity. So we have two equations. We can solve for two unknown variables. So we can solve for two endogenous variables. 
what is endogenous, net exports is endogenous, and the real exchange rate is endogenous. Therefore, we also put these endogenous variables on the two axes that we directly can see what happens if one or the other exogenous variable changes, a curve will shift, and then it will lead to a new equilibrium and net exports might change or the real exchange rate might change. We can start to analyze some shocks by looking at the following shock, an expansionary fiscal policy. When we want to analyze this shock, we have to make clear what kind of variable changes and how does it affect the graph. It is the case that government increases government spending or the government decreases the taxes. So this has an effect here on national savings because of the fact that public savings will decrease. When public saving decrease, also saving decrease, and therefore the saving curve will shift to the left. Let's analyze this stuff in this diagram. This seems to be the initial situation. I'll complete the graph in black color. So this is the initial level of the real exchange rate E1, and this is net exports in this initial situation. Now the government increases government spending, and the S minus I curve shifts uh, to the left because the government increases government spending. We have a new S2 uh, minus I curve. So this is the S1 minus I curve. And we get a new equilibrium here. So this shock is digested in the following way. The real exchange rate increases from the level epsilon 1 to the level epsilon 2. And net exports decrease from the level 1 to the level 2. So the trade balance deteriorates. Let's compare this to the uh, graph from the textbook. Uh, the initial equilibrium is here, where the real exchange rate is at the level epsilon 1, and net exports are equal to NX1. A reduction in savings due to the fact that an expansionary fiscal policy is performed. Public savings will decrease. So national saving re, uh, is reduced. The saving curve shifts to the left, S2 minus I. We get a new equilibrium in this point. This raises the real exchange rate and it causes net exports to fall. What about the dynamic adjustment process? How do we get from one equilibrium to the other? Uh, we have to uh, consider that the increase in government spending least leads to a decrease of national savings. Due to the fact that national savings decrease, this will lower the supply of dollars in the foreign exchange markets. When the supply of dollar decreases, this leads to an appreciation of the dollar. So this change in the real exchange rate symbolizes an appreciation of the dollar. And when the dollar appreciates, it's the case that domestic goods become more expensive. And therefore, the foreigners go shopping in their economy and not in our economy anymore. Therefore, net exports decrease. The next shock I would like to analyze is an increase of the world interest rate. Once more, when we don't have a clue how this shock is digested, we have to look into the equations. And we directly can see here R star. In case that R star increases, investment will decrease. So an increase of the world interest rate leads to a decrease of investment. In case that investment decreases, the S minus I curve will shift to the right. Let's analyze this uh, in this diagram. 
once more I'll start with black ink in order to complete uh, the initial situation. Uh, this is the initial equilibrium epsilon 1 and nx1. Now it is the case that the world interest rate increases, investment decreases, so the difference S minus I increases. Investment decreases so that S minus I becomes larger. This curve shifts to the right because of the fact that R star, the world interest rate, increases. We get a new curve. Uh, this curve can be labeled as S1. Saving has not changed at all. Minus I2. Investment has changed because the world interest rate increased. So we get a new equilibrium here. Uh, epsilon 2. The real exchange rate decreases and net exports increase. Let's also cross check with the graph from the textbook. So the blue equilibrium is the initial equilibrium, epsilon 1. Real exchange rate is on this level, net exports are on the level NX1. An increase in the world interest rate reduces investment. So the S minus I curve shifts to the right and we get a new equilibrium here. Uh, the real exchange rate decreases and net exports increase. What about the dynamic adjustment process? To some extent it's mentioned here. When uh, the investment decreases, when investment falls, this increases the supply of dollars in the foreign exchange markets and this causes a real exchange rate to fall, which is like a, a depreciation of the dollar. And then uh, this has a positive impact on international trade because when the real exchange rate decreases, domestic goods become cheaper, the foreigners are going shopping in our economy and therefore net exports improve. Let's also analyze this shock, increase of investment. So the autonomous component of the investment function increases uh, when I goes up. S minus I curve is affected and the curve shifts to the left. So let's complete this graph once more. First in black ink, the initial equilibrium. This is epsilon 1, nx1. The initial equilibrium. Uh, we say that the autonomous component of investment increases so that the S minus I curve is affected and the S minus I curve shifts to the left. Uh, like at some point in time, we said the autonomous component of investment uh, can be abbreviated by the symbol B0. So autonomous component of investment increases we get S minus I2 here. Uh, the real exchange rate increases. And when the real exchange rate increases, this makes domestic goods more expensive and therefore the trade balance deteriorates. This is also in line with the graph in the textbook. Investment curve shifts to the left and this raises the exchange rate. One shock, uh, which is uh, to some extent interesting, because I think also the result is to some extent astonishing, is a protectionist trade policy. Here it really makes sense to look at this linear version of the net export function, which is mentioned on this uh, in this assignment. A protectionist uh, trade policy 
more or less has the incentive to decrease the imports. For example, President Trump, president of the US, uh, tries to implement this kind of policy, tries to shield uh, the US economy from a world competition, especially competition from China. And he wants to get imports out of the countries. He wants to restrict the imports. When imports are reduced, of course, net exports will increase and the net export function shifts to the right. The net export function is affected, net export function shifts to the right. Let's also analyze this shock. Uh, first, let's complete uh, this relationship here. This is the export function one, epsilon one, and NX1. The net export function shifts uh, to the right because the autonomous component of net exports increases. The net export function shifts to the right. We get a new ed net export function NX2. And you can directly see how the shock is digested. It is the case that the real exchange rate uh, increases. But in the end, net exports are on the same level as before. NX1 is equal to NX2. So this shock is digested in a way that only the real exchange rate adjusts. Real exchange rate increases. When the real exchange rate increases, this makes domestic goods more expensive and the foreigners are going shopping elsewhere. So we have two effects on net exports. The first effect is that, of course, net exports increase because of the fact that um, net exports increase because of the fact that due to the protectionist trade policy, imports are reduced. So we can see here when uh, we only look at this one effect, this will lead to an improvement of the trade balance. But then it is the case that the exchange rate starts to increase. And when the exchange rate starts to increase, this like effect from the real exchange rate on the trade balance neutralizes the first effect. So in the end, net exports are on the same level as before. Let's also have a look into this. This is also mentioned in the textbook, a protectionist trade policy raises the demand for net exports, but then causes a raise of the real exchange rate and leaves in the end net exports unchanged. As you can see here, there are still some topics left in this chapter, but I will stop the video here and I will cover these kind of topics in a new video. Thank you very much. Bye bye.